Pandemics, epidemics, and outbreaks throughout time have brought about the same response wherever someone was found to be infected. Quarantine. It is what we had to get used to at the start of the recent crisis and is an age-old effective method of finding contagions. Quarantine can be quite daunting and terrifying, but how did it evolve throughout the years and how is it helping us? Welcome to Intrigued Mind and into the timeline of quarantine and isolation in the face of pandemics from biblical times to the medieval period to the age of discovery up to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, you'd be surprised to know that quarantine was not really a word used back then, especially during biblical times. It was mentioned in the Old Testament that people with leprosy, or lepers at the time, were isolated and were even told to burn their garments. Although a bit harsh, it was an effective way to decrease infection, but it caused more harm to the leper since it came with social discrimination, giving us the image of lepers as helpless characters in the Bible. This was put into law in 549 CE by the great Byzantine emperor Justinian, whose reign included one of the worst outbreaks of plague in history, who stated that they needed to isolate people from regions infected by the bubonic plague and leprosy. A few years later, the laws became more specific and indicated that lepers themselves were forbidden from even approaching healthy people. This was a flawed idea though, since people who were seemingly healthy but who actually carried the disease were not quarantined. And this is what caused these diseases to evolve and worsen centuries later into what we famously know as the Black Death. The bubonic plague, or infection from a bacteria called Yersinia pestis, had existed for centuries, but in the 14th century, it struck all of Europe and Asia and is responsible for the loss of over 200 million lives, or somewhere between one-third and half of the population. Despite the huge amount of people lost, how did they stop the disease from spreading? They did not understand what the cause was, but they noticed a pattern on how it was spread through proximity with people who had the disease. And how could these diseases spread from far-flung areas at the time? The answer is through trade. Because of this observation, officials found that it was sensible that the coastal cities had to isolate the newly arrived sailors, since they were the only ones that could have come from far-flung areas where the plague was. In order to protect these coastal cities, namely Venice and Ragusa, from the plague, ships and infected ports had to sit anchor for 30 days, establishing Trentina. As time went on, they increased the number of days of forced isolation into 40 days, also known as Quarantino, which is the origin of the word quarantine that we are very much familiar with today. Why 40 days? Well, it could have been because of the Christian religion, where the Bible has many time periods measuring 40 days, like Noah's 40 days and 40 nights, or Jesus' 40 days in the desert. But also, it was more likely due to the plague's infection to death period, which was around 37 to 40 days. Thank God someone noticed. But as seen through history, it was not until the 20th century that the duration of quarantine would have only varied based on the disease's incubation period. But that'll be discussed later on in the video. So what happens in quarantine? Basically, the city restricts the possibly infected group into a smaller group, after which, if their isolation has finished and they are sure they are clear, they can rejoin the healthy city. In Venice, this was applicable to all the ships, their crews, and even the cargo. Everything and everyone had to be isolated on small islands in the lagoon until they finished the 40 days. There were designated areas of quarantine set in the lagoon, namely the Lazaretto Nuovo in the north, which was used for the treatment of infected people, and the Lazaretto Vecchio in the south, which was mainly used for quarantine. But what was life like in the quarantine chambers on these isles? The crew members and their cargo were fumigated with juniper and rosemary, which were medieval herbs used for disinfection, Kind of like a medieval Lysol spray. Of course, these practices were not perfect. Even if there was practice of quarantine, the rich could always pay their way out of quarantine. Sound familiar? Moving forward, we come to the age of exploration. During the 15th to 17th century CE, Europeans would voyage across the oceans in search of new trading routes. But aside from bringing with them goods, they brought something else. Diseases. Now, one notable disease that caused an outbreak in the New World was smallpox. Smallpox was endemic to Europe, Asia, and Arabia, but when these voyagers arrived in the New World, it caused millions of deaths and was responsible for the wipeout of over 90 to 95 of the indigenous population in over a century. It was a catastrophic disease. However, it would not be until 1796 CE when a doctor by the name of Edward Jenner would notice that milkmaids who had cowpox were protected from getting smallpox. He took some material from a sore from a cowpox-infected milkmaid and inoculated it into the arm of a nine-year-old boy. Months after exposing the boy to the virus, 
Jenner noted that the boy never developed smallpox, meaning he was immune to the deadly disease. This was a major breakthrough as he created the first vaccine. This would eventually lead to the complete eradication of the deadly smallpox in 1980, a major feat for humanity. If you have more interest on this topic, please check out our video, The First Vaccine, linked in the comments below. This vaccine was a game changer, since diseases were found to be preventable after all, but it takes time for vaccines to be created, procured, and distributed. So, before the creation of the vaccine took place, quarantine was an effective way to stem the disease's transmission. Quarantine was used not just for smallpox, but for other disease-causing epidemics that occurred during the 17th to 18th century, such as yellow fever and cholera. Due to prominent travel between continents during this time period, quarantine measures had to be stricter, and it forced governments to introduce rules of quarantine, especially in hard-stricken areas. An example would be the city of Boston. Before the vaccine was discovered in April 1721, a sailor was infected with smallpox and was quarantined. Eventually, the crew members were affected, and eventually, an outbreak occurred in town. The epidemic struck Boston, and the ships were required to anchor for 40 days, and if not, they were ordered to pay up a hefty fine. This encouraged stricter measures in quarantine, even in other countries. In fact, in Great Britain, a death sentence awaited people who did not follow the 40-day quarantine. Despite the big price on breaking quarantine, there were accommodations being made. In New York, Bedloe's Island was reserved as an area for quarantine to prevent yellow fever and smallpox. Philadelphia even dedicated 10 acres of land along the Delaware River as a quarantine station to combat yellow fever. All of this effort goes to show that cities saw quarantine as an effective preventative method against infectious diseases. Though the standardization of quarantine measures still had a long way to go, since the duration of quarantine did not really follow measures of the biological nature of the disease itself as it was based on the Venetians' 40 days of quarantine, until the 19th century where disease experts would look back in time and characterize these pandemics by their duration patterns and ability to be treated. Examples include the bubonic plague, being labeled as acute and treatable. In contrast, leprosy was a more chronic disease and found to be untreatable at the time. Because of these findings, France proposed a meeting to standardize quarantine measures Basically, a system of active surveillance between ports to assess the extent of the epidemic at the time. But by the late 19th century, outbreaks of cholera rose due to an increase in trade with Asia through steamships and railways. It caused health officials to give the government more authority in quarantine measures. During the first wave of cholera outbreaks, European harbors barred entry to ships with unclean licenses, which was a term reserved for ships that came from regions with cholera. In Naples, Italy, Health officials even prevented the movement of prostitutes and beggars on the streets since they were seen as carriers of cholera, kind of like the discrimination seen with lepers. Interestingly enough, during this cholera epidemic, uprisings took place among revolutionary groups saying that isolation and quarantine was against personal freedom and human rights, and that it was used as a justification for increasing police power. Kind of familiar, isn't it? By 1918, just when they thought they were free from the cholera epidemic, influenza struck the world. Experts saw that the quarantine measures and health surveillance systems they built for decades did not work with this airborne disease, so they had to close everything down. Churches, schools, theaters, basically all public gatherings. The influenza epidemic was so bad, the Italian newspaper in Italy was forced to stop the daily reporting of the number of deaths since it caused a lot of anxiety among the citizens. In addition, many countries, especially war-torn nations following World War I, had a lack of understanding of disease control measures for influenza, such as the use of face masks, which was pretty crucial in prevention of airborne diseases. As the years went by and scientists started to understand influenza, vaccines and antimicrobial medications became available in the Western world, but quarantine had to be maintained in Eastern nations. This scenario repeated through each influenza wave that occurred in the 20th century. Now, in the 21st century, the history of quarantine evolved greatly to respond to the emergence of SARS the rise of air travel, in addition to this new virus, became a global threat due to its quick transmission and high mortality rate. Plus, the lack of vaccines and effective medication causing stronger quarantine measures to be undertaken, creation of checkpoints on roads and airports, coating off buildings when an infective case was present, and even installation of web cameras in private homes of infected individuals for monitoring were some measures taken with the SARS pandemic. And now, quarantine has never been more relatable in the time of COVID-19. How it was used and how it has evolved is an important event to take note of, especially in assessing public health control measures. When medications are not available, quarantine helps contain diseases, delay the spread, 
and helps prevent death and suffering. Although a disturbance to routine at first, outbreaks are unpredictable and can be catastrophic. Because of their nature, it requires the public to place their trust in public health experts to prevent these diseases from getting a hold on a majority of the population. This can be done through transparent and regular communication. With this, we can avoid the mistakes of the past and address public health emergencies head-on without much losses, unlike what history has shown us. The short-term pain of quarantine is a necessary tool to stem the spread. Stay at home, everyone, and wear your mask. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.